War II, air war resulted in huge losses of aircrew, who were quite literally sitting ducks for anti-aircraft fire. From a growing need to defend the undefended came the genesis of what we now call the bulletproof vest. There was something called a flak jacket, and that was kind of the original name for a bulletproof vest. Air crew used to wear these nylon vests, which had these little two-inch steel plates, which were interwoven, and they would provide protection, as the name implies, from the flak, from the fragments from anti-aircraft munitions. But they were bulky and extremely heavy, a problem solved in the early 70s with the discovery of Kevlar a lightweight polymer five times stronger by weight than steel. Over time, ballistic protection that was being offered to troops was getting better and better. And at the same time, the burden to troops was becoming less. So the vests themselves were getting lighter. More protection, less weight. And as that evolution has continued, the bulletproof vest has been renamed. The Improved Outer Tactical Vest, or IOTV, is the very latest in troop protection. A medium-sized IOTV weighs 1.6 kilograms, down from 10 kilograms for a World War II flak jacket. Fully equipped, it has soft armor panel inserts, four silicon carbide ballistic plate inserts front, side, and rear, and collar and groin protectors. It is also designed with quick release and medical access features. If the, the soldier gets into a very difficult spot, like underwater, then the individual can very quickly release the armor packs, and that gives them more mobility. Mobile, light, and strong. A fully equipped modern vest can withstand a 3006 Springfield M2 armor-piercing round at normal range. But body armor is designed for a very specific task. Disposing of bombs and the increasing use of IEDs calls for protection that is quite different from taking an impact from a bullet. Most people wearing bulletproof vests in combat will probably be shot at from some distance, with a projectile optimized in shape to penetrate materials, a known threat. This is not the case for individuals attempting to disarm an improvised explosive device, a landmine, or an unexploded warhead. Up close and personal, the soldier will potentially be exposed to fragments traveling at incredibly high velocity, possibly even 12,000 to 15,000 meters per second as they're accelerated by the explosion. But that threat can be countered by the advanced bomb suit. With a bomb suit, you've got to deal with a much more intense threat. It's of paramount importance to use thick materials that are able to deal with the loading that you get from an explosive blast. In the aftermath of the London Blitz, bomb disposal teams worked largely unprotected when neutralizing unexploded ordnance. In the decades since, suits have evolved to become sophisticated pieces of military equipment, designed to withstand extreme force while allowing the wearer clear vision and mobility. Bomb suit is generally made from multiple materials. So we would use high strength steels or ceramics to deal with the fragments that you would get from an exploding munition or an exploding IED. And we use high performance fibers such as Kevlar. And we use heat resistant fibers as well. So fibers that are able to deal with the heat of an explosion. All of these materials combined can offer protection from the shrapnel of the explosion but it does little to defend against the shock of the blast. So we use foam, and what the foam does, it mitigates the shock that you get from the explosive blast as it transmits from the bomb suit 
to the human body. And that increases the level of survivability for the occupant. Every battle is an arm wrestle, an examination conducted by an attack on a defense. And the history of war is the story of the evolution and adaptation of offensive and defensive tactics and the machines used to fight them. The IED has changed the nature of warfare, and tactics and equipment have evolved to defend against it, just as they have in every aspect of warfare. And they will continue to do so.